This is the exact drilling routine that I use to become a 5.0 level player. To give you a little bit of background about me, three months ago, I moved down to Delray Beach, Florida as a 4.5 level player. Now it's three months later and I'm ranked 5.5 on Duper and I qualified for the main draw of a PPA this past tournament. I follow this exact drilling routine that you're about to see five days a week. It takes about an hour and a half to complete. Let's get right into it. This first drill is called the dink game. We play just half court like this, and you can speed up whenever, whenever you see fit. Oh, oh nice shot. We play games to 20, win by two, one nothing him. One, one. And everything counts. Nice. Two on him. If we were to actually play this out to 20, we would do best two out of three games to 20. Woo! That's personally my favorite drill. It really works on keeping your dinks low. It helps you for speeding up and it helps for counterattacking. That drill single-handedly is how you get fast hands. Now we're gonna move on to cross-court dinking. We're gonna play games to five points. However, there's a twist with the scoring. Whenever you hit the ball into the net, you go back to zero. We're gonna play best two out of three. I'm trying to move him around. And no speed up. It has to be a dink. Ooh, that was hot. Nice rally. Here we go. Oh. All right, so that one was so high, I'm gonna give him the point. So the score is one, zero. Come on, he doesn't miss, miss, come on. Oh, mine was out. That's two, zero. Now, just as an example, Ridley hit one into the net. So he hit that into the net. So he had two. Now the score is 1-0 me. As he hit it into the net, he goes back to zero. Cross-court dinking is the most common pattern in all of pickleball. If you have any discomfort while you're dinking, you need to practice that or you're gonna get targeted in actual games. That scoring system is important for you to use because it creates that tensity feeling. If you just go out with your friend and cross-court dink, there's not gonna feel any pressure. You're just gonna be going through the motions you need to use the score so you really feel that tensity. Now we're gonna go on to our third shot drop. So I'm at the baseline, my partner's at the kitchen, and this isn't really a game where we're keeping score. Being able to hit third shot drops is a very underrated skill that's not very flashy, but it's super important to be good at. I'll spend about 15 minutes just hitting drops like this, and then I'll switch with my partner there. Now he's gonna hit drops, it's important to note that I'm not just lollipop feeding them into him. I'm trying to work on my fourth ball, which would be receiving a third shot drop. And I want to hit these hard, making it hard for him. So I'm trying to get everything out of the air. And I'm really practicing being aggressive with this ball. Being able to keep your opponents back goes a very long way at the higher levels. Notice how risky I am. I'm really trying to attack every ball and not let them bounce if possible. If you're enjoying this video so far, please subscribe. I'm trying to make it on the pro tour and using social media allows me to reach out to sponsors and have them potentially fund me. So I really want to grow my page. Now we're going to move up to the mid court and hit resets. Same exact setup. Ridley is trying to put the ball away on me and I am just trying to put it back into the kitchen. So it's working on both of our games.
we spend about 15 minutes each just doing that. We really want to be able to reset balls consistently in the kitchen and feel super confident doing it. They're the core drills you need to be doing to get better at doubles. Now I'm going to give you two bonus drills that I do for singles that have drastically improved my game. This first game is called cat and mouse. It's really going to work on your agility and touch at the kitchen. I feed it in and we can hit the ball anywhere as long as it's in the kitchen. There we go. If it's just a little deep, like back here, that's fine. We just don't want to be ripping shots. We play best two out of three to 11. Let's go, one nothing me. There we go. Three nothing me. Let's go, baby. Got this guy's number. Oh! I'm willing to bet your opponents aren't practicing that game. So in an actual singles match, try to bring them up to the net and see who's really been putting the work in. This last drill we're gonna be going over is for our singles drops. Most people just try and rip that third shot, which is totally fine, but you wanna be able to drop the ball also and have that in your arsenal. The way that drill works, me being at the baseline, I'm trying to hit sharp angles and win on my opponent, but I can only drop the ball into the kitchen. The twist to that is my opponent at the kitchen line is not allowed to try to rip the ball and score on me. He's simply putting the ball to the corners, trying to make me run around and just hit shots on the run. We don't keep score for that drill. It's more or less just getting comfortable while hitting drops on the run. Spend an hour and a half a day five days a week doing these drills, and I promise you, your game will be unrecognizable within a month. You have my word on that.